UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin-only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. Hi, everybody. Uh, Nick Blazier here again. I'm back for the UBC final between the challenger Hideaki Ueda and our, our champion Masayuki Mochizuki. Everyone knows him as Mochi, right? He only gets one name. And I'm here with my, my broadcast partner again, Mark Olson. What's up, Nick? It's good to be back. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Almost a year later after we were hanging out in Gibraltar to watch the, the contender tournament. That was really cool. Yes, so we've uh, we've finally uh, got to set up the final here. It took some time with this Corona mm -hmm. thing. Uh, the yeah. final was supposed to be played in, in probably during the summer. Um, but yeah, this was what we could do. And now we're playing the, the 2020 final in January or uh, yeah, in January in 2021. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very cool. And they're playing in Tokyo, I understand, right? We'll see more about the playroom. Uh, yes. We're going to commentate it remotely, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. It sounds like both of them are well studied watching the interview. Uh, both of them super prepared. It should be really close. Both of them are talking like they're in pretty similar ranges of, you know, PR ability and things like that, which is amazing for such a new player in Hideaki, especially. Yeah, I think um, we can we can expect to see great things from Hideaki. Obviously, Mochi, being the only super grandmaster in the world, is the favorite. Everybody knows that. But it's going to be exciting to see what Hideaki can bring to the table because his performance on, uh, during the contender tournament was nothing short of amazing. Right, and it's been a whole year since then in like what is I think a three-year career for him, right? So I mean, who knows how much he's improved since then? Yeah, I can't uh, wait to yeah, see. Yeah, really, no, no idea what to expect. I don't think anyone expected it out of the contender tournament, even, right? But he's done amazing, and it's it's going to be a really exciting match. Yeah. So let's yeah. get started. Let's yeah. get into it. Let's do it. Okay, Nick. So this is the the arena in Tokyo. This room looks really cool, man. It's a traditional Japanese style room. We've got the Japanese production crew here. And now we're gonna have to walk in. It's like a UFC fight or a boxing match. Oh, this is really fun, yeah, yeah. We see Hideaki Ueda with his traditional Japanese suit. Is that what that is? Yeah, I was wondering about the, the dress. Samurai style. Notice the table, Nick, how low it is. Yeah, that's fascinating. They chose to go with the old traditional style. There's the champion. Yeah, seems really nice and peaceful and quiet in the room too. They've got a really good setup for this. So the super grandmaster, only super grandmaster in the world, Mochi. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is Hideaki on his way? On his way to where? Super grandmaster as well. Oh, ah. Uh... Oof, it's so difficult with yeah. the VMAP settings to achieve that super grandmaster. You gotta well, play very true. below 2.5 PR over, I think it's 300 experience points. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So look at this, Hideaki is just fixing his suit. Mochi's got his, his uh, beverage on the table. I wonder what that is. Oh, I don't think we talked about it as well. We're uh, this is going to be twelve matches, right? One Correct. point. The format is for for the match win and one point for the PR win. Exactly. Um, so that's that's uh, eighty four experience points towards the Super Grandmaster title. That's true, and they do right. actually count in the B map uh, ranking system here. The matches. Yeah. Yeah, it's the UBC format. Mm -hmm. um, last year, it only took Mochi ten matches to win the title. So let's see how it goes this year. Oh, the it's players. decided by then, okay. The players are... Okay, there, there goes the mask. We're talking a little bit now, yeah. yeah. Hideaki takes off his mask. He looks very serious. 
Mm -hmm. That was also he the... always does though. I don't I don't get the impression that he's like stressed out or under a lot of pressure. He's just very composed. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Finding his inner Zen. <laughs> A lot is at stake here. They play for five thousand euro in the first prize, and not only that, all the, all the credit and uh, and uh, status that comes with the UBC championship. Oh, they bow in. Look at this. They don't shake hands. They, they just bow. I like it. Yeah. Plenty of respect between these two. And the first move is, on, is has been rolled for two for Mochi. Mm -hmm. Look at the board, Nick. This is the twenty twenty Galaxy board, the Neptune board. Oh, that's cool. I haven't seen one in person yet. Yeah. I really like the tray that comes with it. That's really neat looking. Yeah, it's uh, travel friendly, so you can okay. dismantle the trays. Okay, so we're off. Match number one. This is exciting. I've been looking forward to this, Nick. Mm -hmm. All so, pretty standard. What do you think the, the PR expectations are? We heard their interview. Yeah, they're both aiming for something you know, inhuman pretty much. And I think um, they're not going to get in a lot of unexpected positions. So maybe that'll help them get there too, right? They're both going to play very close to, to bot level. So yeah, I think Mochi is gunning for below 2.5. But he, I think yeah. he said he was probably going to be satisfied if he, he was around 2.7, 2.8 or something like this. I think that's I a think, bit high yeah, for, for him. I don't think that's true. I think he's <laughs> faking humility. Yeah, <laughs> a small I think, inaccuracy yeah. there with the five four. Oh yeah, what do you do with that? It was it's a tricky one, right? It's not it's a do nothing roll. Maybe you take one off the midpoint. Maybe that could be best. Could be yeah. I didn't really pay attention to be honest. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> trying to get in the zone here. Uh, just I'm with you. Taking it all in. Yeah, and this time he gets a little better spare distribution with that checker down to the eight for a builder. Yeah. Oh, this this could be a cube actually. This looks strong, yeah. We, he's we, got another point, better race. He's got an anchor. Uh, he's just winning in every way. So it looks like a pretty natural double. If it's not, it's not off by much, right? I totally agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there we go. It is a small double. It's mm -hmm. yeah, as you said, Nick. He has a small edge in all of the, all of the uh, different areas of the game here. He's got some blitz value. He's got ten checkers in the zone. There's a blood in the outfield. He can shoot at. He's got a little bit of prime value. And there's the cube. Obviously, this is way too early in the game to take uh, to drop. Yes. Uh, yes. It's still quite underdeveloped, uh, Mochi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not it's not a difficult decision at all. And yeah. Yagi just takes it quietly. Doesn't do much to to close the game out yet, but that's good. Another checker in the zone. Another point. I think it's actually a yeah pretty good roll for two. Yeah. Five four. That's a good one. He gets to run with the back checkers. Escaping seems natural, yeah. even though we're losing the race. Ooh, this is big. Ooh, what a nice roll. Yeah. So is this... Yeah, I guess we create a, a gapped 6 prime that seems pretty strong. It's it's nice to step up to the 20 as well, but this just seems like it's worth a little more. Yeah, we can see Extreme Gammon here so tells us that it's definitely the best play to, to go for the prime. Mm -hmm. um, and, you, I mean, you, you block the direct range of the... Ooh, that's not the right idea, Mochi. No, but he's just taking his time. You can feel it right now, right? It's a cube that he's yeah. probably in a money game, just snaps over and feels comfortable with, but he's trying to be very precise. So he's going to look at it. Um, and I, oh, I he chooses this. That's a blunder. That's a blunder from Mochi. It's very understandable because it doesn't feel like you're producing that much to create a blot and switch points, right? Oh, so this is this uh, is much safer. It feels safer. there's a lot of robustness to it. I, I think oh. this, uh, we, we're seeing some uh, game one syndrome here from Mochi. I think he would find this move any other day, uh, probably like a 95% favorite to find the right play. But yeah. here, I mean, there's a little bit of nerves com coming in. You, and also just you need to get your brain and your neurons firing. Uh, yeah. th that's classic game one syndrome. I think that... When he looked at it on the board, I actually, you know, I... I thought maybe the anchor was the better play, but as soon as I saw him make the play and saw that he had a slotted six prime, it looked really strong. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You, you, so I thought seeing it that he would make the play. Yes. Yeah. You you prime in the direct range of the blot so it doesn't have daylight. Oh, six four is a great shot. Oh yeah. Nice. And, and as you said, Nick, the, the slot for the six prime is huge. You know, if you don't get yeah. hit with six one five two, then you got a slot for the six prime. Mm -hmm. Um so Ooh. you're never tuned fan. 
I was actually a couple rolls ago too. Hideaki rolled a six one, and instead of making his bar, he played the safe behind the anchor. Uh -huh. I was surprised by that. I'm always tempted by the purity, but he is well outboarded, so I can see how he found that play as yeah, well. Yeah, it was actually a good play. This was also a good play from Mochi. He could have escaped into full freedom with 6-3, but he found mm -hmm. the best play, which was to make the 6 prime. Yeah, the it seems Hideaki just doesn't have any attacks started yet, so he can play pretty pure. Yes, exactly. He can play bold, I would say. Yes, yeah, bold is a better word. Yeah. Um, 6-2, that was a small inaccuracy from Hideaki. Slotting the 7, I think, was slightly better. Oh, interesting. Leaving that is it. In yeah, that is interesting. I guess that it's one of those... That seems really scary to do here. I think it's one of those positions where you're such in such poor shape no matter what you do, so you can might as well try to take a little chance. and mm -hmm. If you get hit, maybe you can anger up. Well, this is uh, an interesting technicality. I like playing off the mid, but I would think just unstack 4-3 to three and it's going to develop easier. Um, so I guess we're just looking at it on 4-ply there. Yes. Um, so either could be right. This is... This is the kind of play, though, where it can't be that big of a difference, but Mochi will spend some time on it a lot of times. Yeah, right? so that's he true. talks about the clock management. Yeah. Yeah, he mentioned it as one of his weaknesses that mm -hmm. maybe his time management is not as good, but I guess it's that per perfectionist gene that he yeah. has that made him to what he is. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so he's going to roll his six prime here. That's very nice. He's yeah. got it the six prime, and now he's rolling it into an inside yeah. prime. That eight to six looks natural to me too. I'm not sure why we would prefer nine to seven, but both look fine. Yeah, both know? look fine. That's yeah, I guess no it difference. brings two checkers to attack on that checker, where yeah. the other way, the other was seven away. So yeah, I can see it. it. Does not really matter much. Yeah. Two, I think one. Aha. Uh -huh. So should Hideaki go for a counter prime here, or should he just try to consolidate? I think so. I think he's in big risk of being closed out immediately and losing a lot of gammons anyway. So I think we, yeah, yeah. this is great play. It seems like you got to go for it. Yeah, great play from Hideaki. There's a fan. Doesn't matter and too really, much, but he could get a counter prime now. Sure. I mean, uh, he might not be in winning territory yet, but it's nice just to be bringing checkers closer to home and losing less gammons, right? That is so true. He, great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He does have 19% winning chances here, so yeah. it's not over yet. Up from like. 14 after the hit or something like that. It's climbing. We'll it's, get there. Yeah. <laughs> now Mochi is actually happy by fanning, I think. Yes, and 6-5 is not a good good shot. It's too many pips. Yeah. I think you just off the mid with both is what I'm thinking. Look at the yeah. X Oh, that's slot. Yeah. Look, look at the, the XG. Really... Look at the XG valuation here, Nick. Yeah, the slotting play, slotting the 7, slotting the 3 point wins way more games. But it's at the cost wow. of 13% more gammon losses. So yeah. it's super close. I, you look at it right away, right? Because when it works, it feels like it's going to develop pretty easy and be a lot safer. Ooh, I don't, an, I don't know about No, that's this. an ugly play. That's never going to yeah. win you the game, Hideaki. I, I didn't like that. I okay. think he's just trying to save gammons. Yeah, 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 but okay. I think 13 to 8 saves more gammons too, you know? Like even though at the risk of a 3, 4, and a 1, 6 or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's 1 and 9. So, yeah. I mean, actually, now that I think about it, I think his play makes more sense. It's just a safe play. He's kind of yeah. just resigning and saying, I'm trying mm -hmm. to not lose a gammon. Yeah. I, I was just arguing that the 13 to 8 saves gammons too, right? You yes. Get, you take a whole bunch of chips. Uh, that, that's true, out. but you leave a direct sh uh, uh, an indirect shot. That's the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So Mochi has some... Oh, wow. Could and they... get into trouble here. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of counterplay now. He's Did you to... see last roll the two five? The bot still wants him to go for the eight to three slot. Interesting. Oh yeah, I, I missed yeah. that one, but it makes sense. You know, when you're when you're forced to counter prime, you gotta yeah. play as efficient and pure as possible. That's the only way. And uh, but it's now... getting a lot more desperate now too, right? Like he's about to run out of timing, and so if he has the prime, it could hold like this roll on a five four. Where if he doesn't, you know, it could it could deteriorate really quickly. So true got more urgent to slot but this is not a great role for mochi another difficult decision okay we see extreme gammon says that it's actually completely dead even between the top two moves but of course mm -hmm. over the port that you don't have this information so i i can yeah. see why mochi takes his time here this is a difficult decision for a human yeah so this is really poor spare distribution and he escapes on a six and has advantage that's a bummer the other mm -hmm. one is um you know like in a prime versus prime you don't really want your opponent on the roof you want him to have to roll and crack somehow yeah. Um, so neither are very attractive options. Um, yeah. It always seems easier to just attack. 
and hope that you can close out and roll a six before you crash, you know? And even if you do crash a little, you still have some opportunities for him to dance on a five point board. So. Very interesting play here. I think I would choose this play. Uh, the I do hitting as well. play, just uh, as you said, uh, Nick, the giving away the sixes just to escape into full freedom. You're basically surrendering if he rolls a six. Uh, it feels like too much, but and and if you get hit here, the deuces uh, or or a deuce, you can survive. You still have the prime, and so it seems yeah. to me that it's actually worse having him roll a six in the other play than having mm -hmm. him roll a deuce here in this play. But either way, it's it's not good. And now you could also crunch yourself if you don't produce sixes fast. And yeah. We just released another video uh, recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, called Front-Loaded versus Back-Loaded. Yeah, and it talked I saw that. Just like a little three-minute video. In, uh, and we talked about this idea of how to place your, your spare checkers. And having a front-loaded spare checker distribution is quite weak. Yes. Gives you poor flexibility. Yeah, and you can see it when he looked at that play, too. I, I like this. You can see the real difference between the plays, too, is that he's risking a lot of gammons here. That's true. And interesting. I didn't even think about if we have a cube here afterward, if he's about to lose his market. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, no, it's not a cube. Um, yeah, I wouldn't think oh, so. Oh, 6-5. That's a great shot. He needs to run. Yeah. Of course he needs to run here. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to crack. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And now he goes to almost a favorite again. Oh, he's going to look at it. He's going to look tempting. at it, but it doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah, he quickly right. realizes that doesn't make sense. Let me just yeah, get out Yeah, any of five is a disaster after that play. Yes. Yeah, you can't make it. Yep. Okay. okay. Back now in he's... the driver's seat. Uh huh. Now he's good. Boy. But now two's he's... great. He's looking for that. The five is a bit awkward because you prefer to have outfield control. If he, your opponent is to roll a one six from the bar, you would prefer yeah. to be able to have a double shot. But if he wants to remain at the double, uh, remain the outfield control, uh, yeah. he, he needs to play eight to three. It's just super ugly. Yeah, it doesn't look appealing, but it doesn't look bad enough to not do it. So I think yeah. I would find the eight to three there. Okay. You know, it, the the eight point isn't a a point of value anymore. You do want to break it and use it to come in. That's so, true. But yeah. now he can at least have a, a better flexible. Yeah, this position. probably played better. His decision, I think, led to a better position after the 4-2, possibly. I'm not sure. But... Oh, wow, oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, wow. New favorite, Okay, okay. Right? So do we... I guess we hit, right? Why would we... Hit? Why wouldn't we hit? Then he, he's supposed to be cracking on the next roll. That's not the wow, case. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's huge. It's clear by the evaluation. Yeah. You, but, you I hit. mean, my thought process is what goes wrong if we don't hit, right? Like, we kind of... I guess we wait a roll. Oh, but if we don't hit, then we have to produce a six next time because he's not going to crack. He has spare checkers. That's the thing. That's if he true. was, if he, he was more stripped, the next roll. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, okay. If, if yeah. he was stripped and had a front-loaded spare checker distribution, we might choose not to hit just to have him crunch. But that's not the case here. Yeah. Mochi I can think survive. another way to think about it is that game plan in prime versus prime, and he's losing the priming game plan, so he wants to switch to an attack. Right? And and look at Mochi rolls an ace here. Maybe Hideaki would be happy actually because then he would be on the oh, bar. Oh yeah. Yeah, interesting. Now look at this. Oh wow, this well, is an six interesting. six loses the market for sure, right? Oh yes. Oh, that was. And a, there's a lot of gammons. That was a quick evaluation from the transcriber, and there's the recube. Oh, nice. Oh, this is a tough decision for Mochi. In the first game. Yeah. So Hideaki has the better prime. He has. The timing's unclear is the thing about it. And just because the timing's unclear, I, it would lean me towards take. Um, but man, is that close. I uh, I also don't see a ton of gammon threat here. So there's a little bit of that. The gammons arise when uh, Mochi enters with an ace and crunches his, his own position. Mm. That's where the gammons, because then Hideaki can fish for more checkers and eventually win a gammon. But so they have the same number of checkers back if... But Hideaki is threatening to roll that. That's eight, six. Eight. Yeah. So basically, yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. Mochi is thinking now. Eleven out of thirty-six times, Hideaki will roll a six. I'm basically yeah. dead meat every time that happens. I have probably zero wins out of those eleven games. Out of mm -hmm. the remaining twenty-five games, how many of those will I win? And he knows that he's going to lose a little bit of gammon here, so he probably needs to win at least nine out of thirty-six games, which is approximately twenty-five yeah. percent. So he's looking to see, can I find nine wins out of the remaining 25, uh, 25 games here where every time uh, Hideaki yeah. doesn't roll the six? And then he's considering 
what crunch numbers does Hideaki have? For instance, what if Hideaki rolls a double five or a double four immediately? That sure. would just completely well, destroy his position. Yeah. Oh, I was about to say, sorry. Uh, many, most rolls at least are going to break the six prime. I guess there are a lot of small ones that won't necessarily. Yeah. Um, so he's going to get a little more chance there. But yeah, you can see everything that you're talking about. He's clearly thinking about. He's he's adding things up the best he can. Yes, it's trying tricky. Trying a mathematical decision. Exactly. Yeah. This is a very mathematical position. He's trying to calculate here. And he's also yeah. considering the scenarios where Hideaki actually crunches his six prime. But he makes his eight, eight point. Maybe he crunches his six point. Maybe he crunches his four point. So now he's down to a five or a four point board. But yeah. he still manages to roll a six before Mochi can get in and start to counter prime so yeah oh, this is a tricky prime versus prime position i will say a thing that probably looks you know threatening to some people but isn't so much as is mochi's extra blot on the eight i think that's going to be really challenging to pick up for hideaki you know when he rolls a six yeah. he's generally going to want to continue he, and, he and he's takes, not going to be able to park there but yeah that's a great play and there's a yeah. six yeah beautiful take from mochi really courageous take and he yeah. took his time, a uh, super difficult decision. We and could have a one game first match. We could. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, there's Gammon in this <laughs> if, Hideaki, if Hideaki rolls an ace. Yeah. Let's see. Nope. And this is kind of the scenario I'm talking about. He doesn't have a long time to roll that ace as well no. to pick up the checker. But if he does, it only jumps to about whatever that is, 30, 40% Gammons. So he's going to try. I'm not sure. Yes. And now he has a... I wonder if that's worth it. Uh, yeah, that was a... Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. No, and there it is. I think XG didn't like it because you have two checkers deep as well. Oh, really? So the bear-off is highly affected by this. Yeah. It is, but okay. I would have played Hideaki's play for sure. I mean, you yeah. do lose a lot of... Uh, um... Oh, we got a transcriber. Ooh. Jump in. But... Yeah, so so we've got two different... We've got the, the referee or the umpire, whatever you want to call him, sitting next mm. to the board making sure that all moves are legal. And mm -hmm. then we've got the TV production transcriber, which is done by Hussein Paknahat. Ah, cool. And that's what we're seeing here. So this is not the final analysis result. Yeah. It will be analyzed on the deepest settings, XG++. Ooh, okay, no gammons now. No gammons. That's gonna do that quick. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he even has 0.6% winning chances here, Mochi. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> Yeah, that's the uh, like we were talking about. That's the trouble with the two deep checkers on the two is that you're going to open up that six without even getting oh, the checker off a lot of the time. But now yeah, we've up to two two point three percent. Now it's not even that crazy anymore. Yeah, that's a different way that we could get a one game match. Well, four two. Okay, so and, and we've got the PR race uh, as well showing in the extreme gamma. Now we don't get to see it. We need the transcriber to click on the summary tab. Both, yeah, I see both of them before this bear off sequence. They were both around the five range, a little like high fours to five. Yeah, and now um, we're down so to, they're both, yeah, we're both leaving to, room to be beaten for sure. That's true. Yeah. I think Mochi is down to 4.2 now and Hideaki is down to 4.7. But obviously each move here in the bear off is going to chop off a good amount of their PR because it adds a, deci a decision and the PR or error rate is calculated by the total equity lost through errors uh, divided by the, to the, the total number of decisions. Okay, there it is. There we go. 4-0 for Hideaki Uida. Great start from Hideaki and we see Mochi actually is ahead in the PR race here. 3.8 versus 4.4 or 4.5, yeah. so still close. Um, the new 2021 Galaxy Earthboard is a tournament luxury board optimized for travel. Pre-order now. Details in the description below. But a very How fascinating is that though? Like Mochi is the only one that managed to make a large blunder-sized error. Um, but Ueda has just been a little bit less technical in a couple of his plays and that's added up to more equity loss. Yes. Yeah. Very, very interesting. interesting. Yeah, it was a super complicated game actually. For me, the prime versus prime positions are the, the most difficult positions in backgammon. Yeah, I hear a lot of that from people. Uh, sometimes yes, but I don't know. They're they're interesting for sure. Like the cube this... action Mochi was facing on a four cube. Oof. Yeah, that was a tough one. Mm -hmm. Okay, two one here for Mochi. So he's considering stepping up. Usually you don't want to step up because you step into the direct range of the checkers on the eight point. But here, yeah. the uh, yeah Mochi is not sure. It is actually better because now. Yeah. Uh, Hideaki doesn't ha own the eight point. He only has a blot there. So if in he makes any other move that doesn't 
uh, contain, uh, doesn't include the checker on the eight point, he will have the direct shot next time, Mochi. So it's close. That's a very confusing player. You'd know, yeah. rather just throw the one away, right? Yes. Deuces here for Hideaki. That's this is kind of the rich. scenario, right? Because he wants to do that, and now yeah. Mochi would have been pressuring that block. That's yep. true, exactly. 5-4, okay, so I think Mochi just needs to play safe here. He's got a ton of raise equity. He's oh, it's double four. I thought it was five four. No, I think it's double five four. four. Oh, no, is no, it? no, it's double four. It's double four. It's just a little light refraction. Gotcha. Yeah. Playing. Us I would here. think he keeps the checkers in front. Yeah, I would just be playing thirteen to nine with all of them. Uh huh. But good. he's he's gonna look at it. Yeah. Good play, Mochi. Yeah, you could actually make the deuce point, but uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he yeah, but six then you stack is never desirable. Yeah. Yes, that's the thing. It's not good to make candlesticks. Mm -hmm. You don't like them. But Mochi made a great play here. And this, I've, you know, Hideaki has pretty solid control. I guess Mochi's winning the race, but Hideaki has a strong anchor and the better board and all these things. Yeah. He's going to be a long way from a cube but beating he, he should just three play, away, seven away. He should just play pure here. Yeah, just play bold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got the better board, you're down in the race, and you need to yeah. build the seven point to contain that checker. There's no need to be afraid here. I would be very surprised if Hideaki doesn't make the right I play like here. I like this play, yeah. I think I do remember oh. this as a tendency of his, though. He um, he finds the the safe bot plays when they're there. When he sees something that looks kind of awkward, but it just feels like the right game plan, he'll go. For it, you know, okay. so he's gonna look at those safe plays all the time. And okay, do I okay. really need to leave all these fly shots? Yeah. Uh -huh. And look at this: the dice. We, we the the rules in the UBC final is that they play with the dice on checker. So this is a valid role. It's a legal role, and Mochi has to yeah. play the full one. He's got the same ace decision. Look at this. He's going to make a bigger error this Ooh, time, not stepping up. Yes. Because now there's clearly a lot of 6-4, six, 6-2, four, six, two, four, two, where he wants to pressure that block exactly. when he makes the bar point. Yeah. Exactly. So many mm -hmm. numbers where he would would have gotten the direct shot. That was a blunder, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now he's going to step up. Now there's absolutely no reason not to step up. This one yeah. was easy, but Mochi had a... I mean, it's not a. It wasn't that complicated a decision, but it wasn't. It was a, a decision. You know, many people will misplay it, and yeah, Mochi fell into the trap. This is going to be very difficult for Wade to find a cube in this game. I think. I think as soon as he's good enough to cube it, he's probably going to be having too many gammons to want to, uh, and just will play I, on at the score. I think we'll if, see. If Mochi had fanned there, I think he would have had a cube. Yeah, you yeah, think it's worth I, just claiming there, huh? Yeah. That could be. Oh yeah, it's definitely not too good. It's definitely not too good. I thought you were talking about uh, whether he had a cube or not. It, it's not well, too somewhere good. Somewhere in the middle, yeah. Because like you reduce the value of your your gammons when you send the cube at the score more or less. Oh yeah, that's right. The match score. Sorry, yeah. my bad. I didn't take into yeah. account. That's the match score is huge. He has yeah. to adjust adjust a whole lot here, especially in mm -hmm. the gammonish position. So maybe you're right, Nick. Uh, yeah. The, the, it would just just go from a no double take into something that's too good to double. And now this is oh. interesting. We can link up on the 11. That's what I see first. But the attack is a good... I think at the score, maybe it just seems pretty natural to try to play a quiet game. But he's down in the race a lot and has a clear board advantage. So the attack probably jumps out at him right away. Yeah, I mean, both plays are very attractive here. Yeah. The problem with the attack is that you have quite uh, a far distance to your the rest of your army. You yeah. don't have any direct covers, and you're a bit disconnected with the back three back checkers. This is oh, the he's first play at... you see as oh, well, but no, no, it just no, no, doesn't no. look right. Yeah, that no, can't no. be the. That's too... you give up your whole outfield control. Yes. He still has a six to escape. I like this play. It's a good play. It's a good yeah. play. Yeah. Uh, yeah, making the seven point there is just wrong. You know, you you leave him yeah. daylight with a six, and you split your midpoint with a direct shot, and you disconnect your back checkers. That didn't make sense. Ooh, Mochi is doing the smart thing and saving some clock now. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we've got uh, a blunder count of 2-0 uh, mm -hmm. in Mochi's favor, and that's not something you want to be in favor of. This is in. tricky. I'm tempted to play 20-18 to 18 here. Why? I don't oh. think Mochi wants to break any of those points to hit us. This and is it feels like a little... Yeah. No, the, the right idea is to come to the 22. The reason is that Mochi actually has a blitz formation here, so mm -hmm. you don't want to be too loose. And look at the daily builder on the deuce point. When, yeah, when Hideaki steps that. up to the 22 point, he kind of neutralizes the value of that daily builder. This is too big. There's too many yeah. blitz potential here. Obviously, it's, it's not a blunder, close. but 
yeah, yeah. it does have the distraction going for it, like you mentioned, Nick. Well, what I like about it is that when you when you aren't hit or when he chooses not to hit you, now that that checker on the 18 has some freedom to run with too, right? Like you're not trying mm -hmm. to make that point. It's just it might be hard to move next roll if you're on the just the 20 and the 22. So, but this is interesting. Mochi thinks he might have a cube here. He yeah. does have four checkers back to one. Uh huh. I did not see it. That no, four no, no. point, like the best four point board. I'm not thinking about a whole lot. <laughs> That's very threatening, right? Look at Mochi here. He's smiling. Yeah. He knows he that. Too. Yeah. He knows that it's not a. I mean, it's a very easy take, but he might. He recognizes this might be a cube. You know, it might be yeah, one of those probably. because of the match score. You're up in the race. You have some great jokers in, in terms of, uh, especially liberating the back checker, the six That's two, six four, double six, um, and then you got the blitzing numbers, mm -hmm. and then he's got something like this, which is not bad, but it's not really good either well, this this was why i kind of felt good about the coming out to the 18 it's not a, like a lot of these uh -huh. numbers are going to look like this i wonder if that cube action impacts the play at all though that it makes like a swingier game you know or the score i'm sorry if the, uh, score the score impacts that. Uh, yeah yeah could the fact be. that could that be. at the score it could be a, like borderline yes. cube. maybe that's why you can't invite the contact yeah yeah something. yeah I, it, it does matter okay so yeah. now he's look. oh no 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 yeah, I don't like the look of this. That's... I see why he wants to do it, but I mean, the... he immediately discards it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any other play here. Then, uh... I mean, playing two to one is efficient, because you activate the daily builder. Yeah, but then but... you have no four. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. So I don't see any other play here than breaking the eight point. I would. It's be... not that far off, you know. I'm. I'm. Be interested to see what they all look like on plus plus. Um, that is. Uh, that's a pretty neat play. That eight to four, two to one. I like that. That seems to win the most. Oh, he makes this. He's attracted to this ugly play. No, no, no. He moves it back. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just a, good job. All Mochi. of them are ugly. Is the problem right? This is yeah. not a beautiful play either. So. True. <laughs> but it does blitz when he fans. It blitzes the ace point very well. It does a lot of nice things. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't like the play. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, a 52 millipoint error, so mm -hmm. a little bit more than half a blunder. Mochi's PR is uh, 5.2. This is a tricky Double play. You could make another blocking point, but then you're pretty disconnected, so I think running needs... around looks natural right away, right? Oh, yeah, he could. Oh, make... you can link up blocks. He I could, just saw he that. You could link up everything, but the 8 point is just yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh, look but at this, you... how close it is. It's close. Both this face. Last... Yeah, well, now you have four checkers just like divided from that prime. It just doesn't look right. And this yeah. looks really easy to do too, right? Yes. Like, how can this be bad? It's obviously very good. But yeah. the eight point is part of your prime. It's yes. of huge importance. Um, but it, I mean, they're, either, they're, they're equally good, these two plays. You, you win more gammons with the eight point. Mm. That's worth noticing. And you, you win, yeah. and you win more games as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but you lose more gammons because you get stuck with more back checkers, you disconnect, you leave some shots. Yeah. Either way, he's not going to make a mistake here. That's... Hideaki seems very composed and just in his game, too. He doesn't seem to be struggling. I mean, you know, there's always some luck in what decisions you get and how difficult they are. Definitely. Um, but I think he's doing well. He seems very comfortable in everything that he's doing. Yes. And I especially li like the, his his. Did you notice, Nick, the the way he moves the checkers? It's very uh, um, go like he he. I can't explain. Let's have notice how Hideaki move. I've never seen a backgammon player move checkers like this before. Like Mochi, he, he moves the checkers like a traditional backgammon player. Yeah. Hideaki he comes like with a in between his. his look. Oh he yes, yeah, yeah. Second and third finger in between, <laughs> as if he's putting a little stone in the game of Go. <laughs> I do remember that. Wow. So Mochi just had a huge swing with the last roll, where I I feel like, you know, we're gonna get into interesting cube territory. Yeah, this I would be inclined to clean up. I'm not sure why the bot would like doing something with the back checkers here instead. I'm just but, gonna cube here. I mean, how yeah, bad can it be? To. He's up 38 pips. Yeah, yeah, he is gonna cube. Yeah. It's also just, I mean. The problem with it is like how bad can a take be kind of right like i mean you got a bunch of checkers back but you got great structure he does not there's a long way till till mochi's won this game yes so, it's I, I mean I, I i don't see him passing this cube that i would be very surprised if he passes this cube he's got so much contact here 
The blood needs yeah. to come home. He's got yeah. an extra goalkeeper on the... Yeah, okay, good take. He's got three the checkers on the deuce and one on the ace. That's not going to make the yeah, game. Yeah, exactly, um, so, exactly. Yeah. Mochi's got four checkers buried. And the blood on the ace can also be a, a problem uh, mm -hmm. in some some uh, sequences. Oh, for sure. Double four, that's a pretty that's, good roll. I'm just looking for ways to get the three checkers home. I know we could put two of them yeah. on the, eight and the nine, or we could get all the way to the six. Not super one, clear. One, two... Uh, no, eight. I think that's raw. No, it's actually good. If he just plays the checker on the 14 point to the 6 point, then he finds the best play. Yeah. That looks like the most natural play. I don't, like, otherwise we have the 14 in the 9 and the 8, and what's your last checker, right? So, uh, yeah. And I think I it's like the this. same amount of shots, whether you leave a blot on the 12 or 13. It's mm. 5, here it's 5, 2, 6, 1, and 4, 5. So that's th six out of thirty-six. Uh, if you leave it on the yeah, this one here it's six two, five three, and four six. Mm. So and double four, double two doesn't hit. So it's six six shots either way. So that's yeah. what Mochi is doing now. He's just counting the shots and he realizes, okay, it's the same. Let me play this one because this one I get a little bit better spare checker distribution. I get a build yeah. on the eight point instead of the nine. Mm -hmm. You're closer so, to clearing the back point too. Yes. So. True. Um, you might be further from safety. Actually, you have more landing spots from the from the twelve. I I just see that now, so maybe that's a little better for that. Yeah, that's that's probably why they they were equally good. Yeah. Because they got a little bit of pros and cons, pro and con, each of them. Okay, that's a good shot. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Now there's some gammon thread here. There is actually yes. So this is a holding game with a goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper is always in danger of getting blitzed, and he actually has a lot of shots here to blitz. Ooh, that's a good nice one. Nice shot for that. Yeah. Thirty-one and, and a half leave... percent gammon. Ooh. Yeah, we leave the shot while he's on the bar. Mm -hmm. I like this. Yeah. The gammon is slowly increasing here every time. Hideaki fans. We're just bringing checkers in. I don't think you make the point. Um, yeah, the game plan is to bring them in. The question is, is that easier to bring in when you make the point? And actually it is. Here you oh, wow. might get into like quite a, a... bit. Yeah, yeah, here you might get into a sticky... Because if he can't clear the 8-point next time, he can just clear the 7-point next time. There's, There's the, the double threes. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of a careless play by Mochi. It was wow, better. I, would, I don't think I would have really considered the 7. That's that's interesting. I don't, it's a tough one to see. I'd I think have to study that to find that. The logic there. is that if you roll one of the bad numbers that doesn't clear the 8-point, then that's a number where you can clear the seven point. So now mm. you're just clearing the seven point. It's like you could just do that for free next time anyway. So oh, you don't wow. really gain anything. Oh, Look at this. oh wow, Mochi. That's Mochi's a cool... looking at this going for answers, why this had to happen to him. Yep. Oh. It all started this with a careless 2 1 from Mochi. This is a maximum punishment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly <laughs> that the. It's not clear that the. Uh, what do you call it? the punishment fits the crime? Wow. Now there's not a lot of gammon threat here, but Hideaki should win just about every game, so this could be claimable. Uh -huh. I, uh... The take point for Mochi will be nine percent because if Hideaki redoubles to four, it's actually redoubling for the match because Mochi can redouble back to eight. So Mochi is considering: Am I better off passing and being down six zero Crawford? Yeah. Which, in, according to Extreme Gammon, in, if both players are equally good, you got nine percent match winning chances. Yeah. As we see here, he's got 8% in the position. Seven I was going to ask, would you have an estimate for wins? I would just assume as Mochi that I could pass this, but these, these are hard. These are they super can hard. Takes. I mean, yeah. how can he win this game? Oh, it's yeah. so difficult, you know? I guess I really, it's... The consideration to me is whether it's worth sending or not for Hideaki. Because he's got to have the pass, right? Well, he doesn't have to, but it's, it's usually pretty good. It's got to be close. And you are going to lose out on any chance of Gammon, right? So you That's could just true. gammon him for the match instead yes. of risking all these points. That's true. Um, so you have to, and there's not a lot of that here. But there's like maybe, what do you think there is? Like I, five to ten percent gammons? Okay, so we see extreme gammon tells us that it's actually got fifteen percent gammon, which is quite high. Wow. It's, be, it's because okay. of the extra uh, two checkers on the eight point. They might get mm. into trouble. You enter from the bar, and now you have to uh, let go of your eight point, and you expose yourself to a shot, and that's now you true. got two checkers on the bar. So. Yeah. Um, that's that's from where the, that's where the gammons come from. But Hideaki must think here. He's doing the right thing because this is a volatile position. If he yeah. seals the deal and uh, closes the six prime, he, he's essentially won the game. Yeah. So it, it has volatility. That's why he 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 needs to think about the cube. And mm -hmm. even though he's killing his gammons, extreme gun, extreme gammon, yeah. the engine here tells us that it is actually a cube. 
and look on at the how four ply, it's razor thin though. It, it is. It could just just as well be too good. So, um, yeah, I like to send these kinds of cubes and hope my opponent also doesn't know and might take. You know? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that's true. Yeah, he's giving it, by, by redoubling. You're giving your opponent a chance to make a mistake. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, Hideaki is going to take his time. This is a crucial decision. Yeah, I, I wonder what he's trying to calculate here. It's it, I think he's just thinking about how the game plays out and probably trying to get a guess at what his gammons are. Um, see if he can get to that 15% number. Yeah. Um, but yes. man, I don't know. That's a really hard one for me to estimate over the board. It is, I, and it's not only about the gammons. It's also about the volatility. That's what's mm -hmm. tricky about it. Yeah. Because the more volatility you have, the more you need to, the more incentive you have to double, and the less incentive yeah. you have to play on too good. If this was less volatile with the same gammon rate, it would be easily too good. Like, why, yeah. why, why would you risk taking a roll? Mm -hmm. uh, but here he does actually risk taking a roll. Like, imagine he rolls something poorly and then Mochi rolls 1, 6 or 2, 5 from the bar. Right, You know, yeah. that's where the volatility, it, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of volatility present here. It's not all the way over, yeah. But he's left himself with plenty of clock to figure this out and spend his time on it. I like that about it too. I think he uses his clock very well finds uh i mean this is the right decision to spend all of it on right totally yeah i mean little does he know that it's actually super close <laughs> that's kind of always how it is though isn't it yeah. don't you find when you spend like five minutes of clock time every time it's because they were equivalent plays well i mean right. that it's that, that's because you're you're spot on but sometimes it's not yeah. like that <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> so mochi i mean mochi doesn't look happy here he knows that he's gonna face a tough decision yep. if he gets recouped um maybe he's, he knows he's just dropping it i think that could be could be oh yeah. look at how much he's thinking but there's no good scenario here right either he's dropping to crawford or he's maybe going to lose a gammon yeah. for the match right so yeah I don't think but it happy. is a, it is a tough decision for mochi because he just needs to find nine percent in the position maybe mochi estimates his winning chances of, to be ten percent rather than the actual eight percent that extreme gammon tells us there's also it's the fact fair. there's also the fact that this is not extreme gammon playing the checkers it's a human mm -hmm. being, even though it's a very strong player. He's going to play on. He's yeah. going to play on. So you, my point was just that maybe Hideaki doesn't win 92% from this position. Yeah. Maybe he only wins 91% or 90% because he's probably going to make a couple of mistakes along the way. Mm -hmm. um, very I bet interesting. when he wins a gammon, though, that he's probably not going to. So it's interesting. Yeah. Yes, that's really, true. I do also feel like the safe decision in those spots when you're three away holding a cube and you're going to play for the match like it's it's way less likely to be a giant error to play on than to claim right if you send it you can be making a big mistake yes that's true yeah, yeah. because uh at least we know that the doubling window is very narrow mm -hmm. so uh it can't be if uh, the more gammon you have in the position the less of a mistake can it possibly be to yeah. to, to redouble and he's trying to figure out the technicalities of, you know, spare distribution here. Yeah, Seems I reasonable. think it's a good play. Mm. One, three for Mochi. Yeah, Mochi is probably down oh, to... Oh, wow. So that actually, if Hideaki would have taken a checker off the 20, the one, three is a cracker. And now oh. I think he missed something there. Yeah, yeah. Could be. Yeah. Okay, so another what tough decision. What a great decision. roll that is if that happens, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Now he has another tough one. Okay, so this is again, this yeah. the redouble here is oh. even stronger because of the volatility level is higher than before. And is well, Mochi has a take now too. Yes, he has a take, which is wild. But um, yeah. <laughs> it's also his gammons have dropped. You can see now. I was thinking that this would develop into an out like an eight and seven prime most often, but now that we're deep, we're way more likely to just close out and play for whatever gammons from there, and less likely to get those other two checkers outside. So it feels like a, a sharp drop off in gammons, but it's it's not as much as I would have thought. It's about three percent, I can see. Yeah, I mean, you, you're, what you're saying is true, Nick. But also consider that now he has an even deeper inside prime, like the perfect mm -hmm. inside prime. So that mm -hmm. that kind of adds to the gammons. Um, but the problem here, and the reason Mochi's winning chances are even higher, is because Mochi is at the edge of the prime. He wasn't mm -hmm. at the edge of the prime just before. So here we're going to see a lot of sequences where Hideaki is going to hit loose on the ace. And if Mochi is lucky to hit an, to roll an ace immediately and enter, he can actually win the game. Okay, this is so a decent size error. This yeah. is a great roll, though. That's a great I mean, roll. closing the seven is ideal. You like yes. that way better than attacking. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Now he's got the six prime. Now we can just slowly and steadily roll yeah, no forward. No volatility anymore. Yeah. Nope. This is just easy play on. Yeah. 
But he didn't quite have enough time to figure that that second one out necessarily either. He's low on the clock now. That's true. This is in this format. This scenario is actually really good for Hideaki because every time he takes a roll, he gets a decision for a cube action. Oh, this so is a bummer too. Yeah, that's. I'd uh, love to hit loose here and try to pick up that checker, but I think instead he's going to have to close out, right? Oh yeah, with the double sixes, yeah, just close it out. It's also yeah. a bummer in the PR race because now he gets fewer <laughs> decisions. Yep. So not a good roll. Okay, there's the cube. And he's just gonna well, claim. Why would I mean? Te Clearly, technically too good. Yeah. Yeah, well, because this... if you have zero volatility in a position, it it's not a redouble, no matter how much how high your equity is. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was the case. It was a little bit weird. It, it doesn't matter, you know. It's it's fine. I was thinking the only points. sequence I can come up with is like double fives followed by mochi sixes. He might regain his market. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Could yeah. Be. But but he could also win a gamma, you know. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Melbourne Backgammon International. He, yeah, he could win again. Yeah. I think it was a little bit weird that he doubled there, but fair enough. I think so too. So Crawford now tend to, like, PRs tend to come down a little bit because the cube yes. decisions aren't there anymore. I can see that they forgot to... to uh, to flip the take point sign and show that it's a seven point match and this is a Crawford game mm. because yes. it just says take point. But yeah. I hopefully all the viewers know that we're playing seven point matches here in the UBC final. It's fun to see them play quickly when they're in time trouble too. Like, I don't know. You know that they can just do it, right? So it's, it's so interesting that they take a ton of time when they have it and then when they don't, they're fine though, right? <laughs> There's not really any risk of someone losing on time in this match. That would be insane if one of the players lost on time. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to happen. Okay, slight advantage in most areas for Mochi here. Yeah, he's deciding whether it's contact or just run, I guess, and that seems reasonable. Yeah, except for Yagi has full freedom with the back checkers. So true, true. That's usually the best indicator to see who's ahead in the position. This is a great roll uh, early. It's, no, 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 that's not the right deuces. That's doesn't the, feel like it. The natural play is 13 to 11 along with yeah, it, but yeah, 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 it's yeah. the midpoint, and like, you have totally. too many points here, so it looks a little weird. Good play um, from uh, Hideaki. No, but you can stack the midpoint. It gives you so poor flexibility that you're going to leave more shots. And the, the 11 point is so good. This structure with the 4 point, 6 point, yeah. 8 point, 11 point is a really powerful structure. The checkers on the 11 point work so well on the, yeah. on the 5 point, both yeah, as attackers and builders, and blocking point. Yeah. Loss. Yeah, it's really messing up this role for, yeah. for Mochi. This is exactly. purely destructive, or he has to run out to a triple shot, right? You don't really like either. Yes. What about this one? This is a double hit. We can't really clear from the rear. We're going to leave some shots. This seems like the... Or break the 11 point, maybe. Just Yeah, just break the 11 yeah. point. Or play from the 11 point. The double hit <laughs> is actually uh, 4 million points away. It's Not bad. tied. Yeah. The double hit was the first play that I saw. And I think the play, this would probably be the play that I find, just play yeah. two from 11. That's what I see, but this is again like the, the problem that I have with the twos, is that there's going to be a lot of challenging follow-up rolls like this, you know? I don't, I don't really like how I have to play the next roll. Oh, uh, that play, Hideaki, is... I mean, you... It's interesting. You, you try to clear the, the rearmost point, which is okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. but two problems. You're not ahead in the race, and mm -hmm. you putting an ugly daily build on the four point. So he does find the best play. Good play, Hideaki. Yeah. What about the uh, six here? Yeah, he doesn't like it, whatever it is. Maybe you just come out yeah. instead of breaking your bar point. Yeah, yeah, just come out. Looks fine. The reason he's not insta moving is that he knows that the formation with the checker on the 23 and the bar point is not really good because both checkers are in the blitz range mm -hmm. of, uh, of the of the checkers on Hideaki's 8 point. So he prefers to have the back checker on the 24 point rather than the 23 point. And now mm -hmm. he gets punished, but obviously... Great roll, great roll. Great yeah. roll. Now he needs to produce, and he doesn't. Ooh. Yeah, he had a lot of opportunities there, and now he's on the ropes. Yes. Right? Big swing there. What about the PR race? Do you remember, Nick? It's the, who's ahead in the PR race? We oh, boy. need to see I the summary know. from the... From the transcriber. Yeah, it gave a couple small decisions back towards the end, so it, it could be, I, I expect it's really close. It's not the best match for either of them either. Yeah. I know that. Yes. They're going to play much better than this in other matches, yes. I bet. 
very tricky match, especially for Mochi, I feel. I feel like Mochi had a lot of tough decisions in this match. Oh, interesting, the ace point here, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess so. I know you don't want to leave contact with the 15, but you could do a one checker possibly in a DMP scenario like this. Mm, but Jeez. now, I mean, he doesn't care about gammon wins. Yeah, so, so you just clear contact, right? Yeah, like, don't I don't just... think you want to deal with the impurity of making the two. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. It's it's close. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's really close. Yeah. And we just saw the PR race. Uh, Hideaki is ahead in the PR race right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's ahead. See, this This oh. is, uh, it can be difficult to make the three is the only problem here, right? Like, this is, yes. and you don't like having the eight along with it. So it, it, while it seems really natural to do this, it's actually kind of difficult to follow up on. It is, but the other yeah. play can also make it difficult to make the three or the two yeah. points. So now he at least he makes Fair. one of the two points he needs to make. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a, it was actually I actually impressed that he found that play because I think most players would have just played from the rear. Yeah. Okay, what about Mochi? Should he split here? Oh, he's thinking. Usually you don't want to split because you don't want to open yourself up to getting gammoned and getting blitzed. I don't know if he has timing to play an ace point game here, though. So, yeah, this is very difficult. Uh-huh. Oh, it's close. Yeah. yeah. The engine says that splitting is slightly better, but it's I kind of thought, too. Like, again, at the score, the 13 to 11 is somehow considered... Oh, play. that yeah. play! And this, ah. you find timing if you get hit, right? Like, I think it kind of works yeah. every way. Yeah. So. Look, he doesn't even hit. Yeah, why would you? Right? Yeah, that's a he instantly sees the non hit. Yeah. Why would you hit? Good play, Hideaki. Very impressive. Yeah. Very nice play. Double Showing five. Us some great technical fireworks here. Uh -huh. I like this. Fives is awful. <laughs> yeah. Really that's sucks. a real bummer. Yeah. And now Hideaki's just cruising. Yeah, two dead checkers is going to be pretty difficult to recover for Mochi. Yeah. So. He yeah. finds the he most does. flexible play, good play. Hmm. Mochi, I mean, what could he possibly do? I guess he had to split now, right? Otherwise, you're just going to crunch. Reserve it, yeah. I guess getting attacked might not be the... Well, Well, that's the thing. It might be harder, easier to make the three-point when you do this, so I'm not sure. This doesn't seem quite right. Okay. Right? Because now fives can be used to... Or like, you know, I don't know, like a five-four is a role that's not going to comfortably make the three-point. Any four, really. Any four, but the fours play well from 10 to 6 anyway. They're not bad, but I think they're too much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you got to do something like this and try to hang on to a five-point board. Like getting checkers off the six points pretty good here, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe you don't have bad fives. I like this. Yeah, it was a great play from Mochi. I, I thought yeah. it was very difficult. Four, three. So this is probably hitting loose in the other scenario. Now it's slotting. No, no. Why would you slot? Really? Is that a... Uh, what else can you do? I you think... have to break the eight? Yeah, yeah just break the hit. eight. Just break the eight. But I guess he still has a five prime and an extreme gamma. Yeah. I don't think it was the best play. I didn't see the rank order, but uh, it didn't uh, put out as an as an error. Yeah. So I like it because it develops better, too. When you're running yeah, out of yeah, timing, yeah. I found like the slot goes up in value a lot because you know it's just easier to deal with later, right? As soon right. as you... You put another checker on the five and the four with that four three, like you get really unlikely to ever make the three point. It's going to be hard from there. Okay, Mochi's in trouble here. Yeah. Yeah, he's down to four percent winning chances. So this is oh, okay. Oof. It's even less now. The door being trapped in a, being trapped in an ace point game with a crunched front position. That's yeah. basically the worst type of position you can be in in backgammon. Exactly. Yep. Okay, and Hideaki is just going to roll home with sets. Yeah. That's easy. I think it's, it's the best way to do it, really. Two more sets. That's what I would do if I was him. And look at the PR race. I think it's going to be 2 0 to Hideaki here. He's, is it? Yeah, 3.2. Got it by quite a bit. 3.2 to Hideaki and 3.8 to Mochi in the PR race. Wow. So he's going to be ahead 2 0 after Even match here. one. Forced to leave, okay. Yeah, this is game over, Mochi. Look at this. Look at the PRs. Wow. 3.8. Yeah, that's pretty clear. No blunders, too. That's a great job. That's really good stuff. Good stuff from Hideaki, yeah. Them, There's the bow. So my understanding wow, now okay. is that we've got to take a little time to run that on a higher analysis level to confirm that PR result, but the, the gap's pretty large, and it seems likely to stay. It's yeah. two points for Hideaki. I yeah. think it's probably close to 100% uh, that Hideaki wins the PR point here. 
we will have the the final result with the deep analysis with XG plus plus analysis. And uh, what do you think about this uh, match one, uh, Nick? Oh, what an exciting game! You know, I mean, I'm sure Mochi's not excited to just get blown out and have a bunch of difficult decisions. Um, look but... at this! Look at this, Nick. Now Mochi's gonna see that he's losing the PR race. Yeah. As they run Let's see how he reacts. He takes it quite slow. Okay. He didn't yeah. react too much. Oh, oh, look at how much closer it gets it, when they ran it. That doesn't. There were a lot of close decisions in there. Yes. So it doesn't surprise me too much. Uh huh. Interesting. But, um, yeah. Okay, so it's very. I mean, two great points here for Hideaki. He's up 2-0, but the PR average will be the deciding factor in case of an equal amount of points. If the, after 12 matches, the score is 12-12, uh, it's going to be the PR average deciding who wins the the, uh, the final. So mm -hmm. it's in, in that regard, we still got uh, absolute uh, suspension. Uh, sure. But 2-0 for Hideaki, great start. Yeah, I would say in that way, it's it's always really frustrating to lose a PR matchup by 0 0.12, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just not enough to feel like you got outplayed, but that's going to happen a lot in this match. But as we said, both of them in the mid threes is like quite a bit higher than what they're capable of. So not the best match for either of them. I mean, it you know, some of it was difficult decisions for sure. Some of it looked like some plays that I think Mochi is capable of finding. But didn't. I'm not yes. quite sure why. Maybe you know? a couple so. of them was like that. And Mochi, I think he had a blunder in game one, which was yeah. just clearly game one syndrome with that double aces, yeah. uh, where he didn't find the, the the play that made the five prime with the with the slot slot to the six prime. Yeah. Um, that was the storyline from last year, right? Is that he takes a little time to warm up in the match. You that's know? true. So. Yeah, he, he yeah. didn't play well uh, last year in day one, and then he played superhuman level on day two and day three. Yeah. It, it, we should also say that this was a short match, three games. Um, so yes. the PRs are much more volatile in such a short match. And it was a match where the, the score actually had a big role to play. We had a big uh, skew yeah. in, the, in the score and we, had, we saw the match recubes and stuff like this. So it was not an easy match. You know, it was one, probably one of the more difficult ones. Very true. So three... Yeah, I understand you're going to review this with a Grandmaster now pretty shortly, right? Oh, yes. We've got a secret Grandmaster coming up, joining me ah. in the in the stream here to to analyze all the moves and uh, yeah. and the blunders that the, the players made. I'd love to see what um, another take on some of those close calls, some of those really, you know, see if any of those plays that were close on foreplay got uh, overturned and what they would have done there. I think that's going to be really neat. That's going to be interesting to see. And Nick, you and I, we're back tomorrow for match number two. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll see you see you tomorrow. I'm excited for it. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Nick. See yeah, you tomorrow. Bye. Now. bye. <laughs> and the viewers stay tuned because we are uh going to go on a little short break here and then we're going to be back with a surprise grandmaster. We're going to be analyzing all the decisions so the the show is not over yet. Uh if you don't have more time, so click the subscribe button, click the little notification bell so you should be notified when they when they play again tomorrow. And uh, thank you, Nick, for joining this time. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay, and the viewers, see you in a moment. The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout-out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout-out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin-only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. And we're back. I put on a cap and I have uh, the secret grandmaster here in the studio. The triple C, the triple world champion and grandmaster, Jürgen Granstedt. Welcome to the show, Jürgen. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. It's nice to have you here. 
and uh, you're going to help us uh, look at some of the key moments of uh, the first match of the UBC final. It's a 2-0 win for uh, Hideaki Ueda. Uh, first of all, what do you think about that, Jürgen? Hideaki winning 2-0 here. Uh, the PR was close. Uh, obviously, it was about the first game was key when it was turned it around. And it's, yep, it's, it's a good start for Hideaki. Oh, I just realized that I, I swapped our names here in the live stream. <laughs> Let me just fix that. It looks weird. Okay, there we go. Good. That's more natural. Yeah, great start for Hideaki. Um, so let's uh, let's review some of the the key positions here. We've got some positions flagged. Uh, so the first one is the 5-4, and this one is funny because it's an opening position. It's the fourth move of the game. So what do you think about this one, Jorgen? So... It's the 5-4 for uh, Hideaki in game one. I only see your face here. Should I see uh, where should I watch? Uh, ah, do you have, I, th I think you have it in, in Extreme Game on the, ma the match file, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. you mean like, yeah, sure. We can just yeah, follow yeah, each other like this. Yeah, we start with uh, the 5-4. Uh, it's interesting that uh, backgammon is a game where, where you, even after first roll, you got problems. If you see a game like chess, the, the players don't have any problems the first moves, but in the backgammon, even the second move, Hideaki has a problem here to find the right play. And it's like uh, six, seven alternatives that only are within the blunder range. Yeah, so it's pretty, uh, yeah. So the hitting play here is the right play. Uh, it's a race thing, I guess. Yeah, I think the reason he's 5-4 running to 14 points is, is wrong is because of the race. His uh, game plan is not the racing. Yeah. Uh, but it's very difficult to find the right play. And the, the hit and the, the more quiet play to come up to the... 20 points is so different, it's very hard to, to judge. Yeah, what I notice is that this play, the quiet play coming up to the 20 down to the 8 is actually way better than Hideaki's play of running. And I think it's got something to do with the deuces because when he runs, the position looks like this. All of a sudden the deuces are good as well. And uh, you know, the threes play well over on the other side of the board. And he already made the four point with four two, so he doesn't get that good roll to make a four point. So all of a sudden there's just more good roll somehow. With the right play, there's a little bit of uh, duplication of the threes, at least, because he makes the anger and he hits loose with the three. Yeah, or not with the right play, sorry, with the quiet play. Uh, but the best play was just to, to be aggressive here. Okay, let's move on. Uh, then we get into a position where Mochi, he uh, doubles quite uh, naturally early on. Pretty standard double take. Uh, and then we get into the first blunder of the match, the double one. So what's going on here, Jorgen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you just look at it, it looks so good to make the five point and the bar point is have the, the eight point slotted it for making full prime. Because the six prime is what they want to do in this position. Then the game is basically over. Uh, I th I think it comes down a little bit to, to, to the retention. Yeah, started the match. It's easy to make mistakes early in a match. Uh, and you could see also before the match, it looked a little bit tense and uh, they, <laughs> we haven't played live gamma for a long time. So I think he, if, if we show this to Mochi as a position, he will, he will find the right play. I'm sure of that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, it, it's, yeah, I agree. Like 19 out of 20 times or even more often, he would find the best play here. So there must, maybe well, there was something going on. I think I mentioned in the commentary that maybe there was a bit of game one syndrome going on here. So it's, it's quite peculiar. And we, yeah. Um, yeah, and versus the single checker here of uh, Hideaki having one man back, the pure prime is really valuable. And, and it's just so good to make that priming play. But yeah, Mochi didn't find it. So that was the first blunder of the match. And uh, then we move on to another interesting mo move, which was actually the roll after, right after for Mochi. Uh, almost a blunder. So what's going on yeah. here? Uh, yeah, it makes sense that it makes same kind of mistakes because if it doesn't want to leave a plot that only hits on four numbers why should it slot the bar here so I think maybe he is missing that the, the race got much closer when he sent the cube uh, he was up 10 pips and here it's only up to four pips and just playing safe is, is not enough yeah maybe. also Hideaki's plot on his four points is a real weakness so he, Mosh is not that afraid to, to get hit. 
I think that's the key. Mochi should actually play bold here and just tr use his su way superior front position to just squeeze out an even stronger position. And the best play was yeah. this play, slotting the seven. It's a very aggressive play. And for many yeah. people, uh, many players, this might look a bit reckless, but I think it goes to show the McGreal safe versus bold criteria here. When Mochi has such a superior front position versus a one point board and a blood, he can take the chance to squeeze his position even more. So this was a really expensive sequence for Mochi. Um, yep. So let's, uh, by the way, do you, you see this a lot, right, Jorgen, that uh, the slotting plays for prime, it, it kind of ar arises when your opponent has a single checker, right? You wouldn't do this slotting yeah. play if you had an anger or more, multiple back checkers. Yeah, of course, if he gets, uh, gets away with his single checker, then it turns to, to, to raise a holding game. So it's really important to, to contain the checker. Yes. And uh, the best way to make your point is to slot it. So, yeah. But this is, again, it's a play. He's just not into the rhythm really early in the match. It's, it's, it could it's be still, the, uh, yeah. still a bit tense. And uh, in, in the, if, normally he will find this play, I'm yes. sure of that. His neurons were not quite firing yet. Um, Jorgen, I'm getting a comment that maybe you can correct your camera a little bit so you're a little bit more to the center. Uh, okay, I just have the, the, my board up here so I don't see how... Okay, yeah, this is okay. This is fine. Yeah, this, this is perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay, let's move on here. So uh, then not too much happened. It goes a little bit back and forth. Mochi gets the six prime. Now he just needs to bring his checkers home. He gets this beautiful six prime. Oh, and there we have another crucial decision. The two one for Hideaki. He did find the best yeah. play here though, but this is quite a dramatic move. It is. Uh, what, it's easy to maybe be, a lot of plays will be too passive here. Make the four point and maybe play 13, 12. You don't want to get another checker hit. And you think like, I have a guy behind the six prime. I'm losing this game. Try to just avoid the game on. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, much is a way to attack here anyway, and uh, may win Gammon just by closing this checker out. So it doesn't lose much to try to go for the win. So that's why this two one is is correct, and it's uh, in, if he found it pretty quickly, and that was impressive. Yes, good play by uh, Hideaki Ueda. And then Mochi actually fans, and Hideaki does get some counter prime going on here. Uh, he yeah. closes his. Uh, his five point, and then there's another crucial decision here for Hideaki, the six five. And here he commits a quite sizable error. Yeah, I think it's the one play Hideaki will regret in this first match is this six five, because it's, it's, it just feels wrong to play 13 2. Especially after the 2 1, when he's really going for, for try to win the game. Now he has to continue. Yeah, and the so best play. So 13 2 doesn't make sense. No, it's essentially I just a gamut. That, though, I, I'm not sure I would found the right play here. The, the, the X key likes to, to slot the, the three points. It's, it's a really cool yeah. play, huh? Uh, Staying with four blocks. Yeah. That looks really aggressive. It's really aggressive. Uh, it's one of those, uh, yeah, um, when, you're, when you're up against a six prime, you need to make a counter prime. And the best way to do it is just to let your checkers work as efficient and hard as possible. And this is what we see here. That's why purity and efficiency goes up in, in value. I mean, but who would have found that play, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 two down makes sense because now you can also make the, the bar point and that can also it's be still, effective. So. Yeah, it's still pure and uh, it's, it's a, not as efficient, you know, because you don't get to slot the points and you have a little bit of a mini stack going on on the eight point. Uh, and if purity and efficiency is really important, but again, less, less risky. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, it's actually Hideaki again, uh, just one roll later, he gets a two five from the bar and actually it's very similar to the last decision. Yes, yeah, same idea. Uh, uh, you need to need to make the three point. You don't have builders, especially now when you, when you kill the checker on the two point. You have a, a smaller chance to make the three point naturally, so that's where it's more even more important to, to slot. But I think maybe still in the mindset to, to avoid losing gammon and uh, not 
taking full potential of this role. Yes. So the best. And play. it's not it's not a super big mistake. I mean, it's a mistake, but it's. Uh, yeah, four point nine percent mistake. So it's a little more than half a blunder. Um, yeah. yeah. So this is how the best play looks. We're slotting. We're playing efficient, and the safe play that Hidiagi found was this play. You can see it's a little bit stiff. It's not as flexible. Yeah, not as efficient, but safer. We can see here there's a significant difference in gammon rates. Twenty one percent for the right play versus. 13.6% for the for the Idiagi's play, but the difference is in it is really showing here in the win rate. There's a five percent difference in win rate, so that's why you simply win so much more games by playing pure. Yeah. Okay, let's move on here, uh, Jorgen. So we got a five four from Mochi. He thought a long time about this move. Yeah, I understand him. It's just really tricky, and it's hard to calculate uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, by not hitting, you hope that Hideaki will crunch. On the other hand, if you hit, you can have a way to go forward. And it's uh, pros and cons are both plays here. And uh, it's, yeah, it's really difficult play. Yeah. And it turned out that there was a really, really close decision, but Mochi found, found the right play. That was impressive. It was, yeah. I mean, it also goes to show how sharp he is, you know, because he took a long time here. And it's actually because they are so close that it's very difficult to. To, yeah, he re that's also a sign of a good play that realize when they have a problem, you know, and they, it's worth spending time. Now it's only 0 0.1 difference, but it could easily be a blunder to make a mistake in a position like this. So you really have to take your time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the, this is a definitely a very crucial moment in the game because it's, it's just at the point of crunch in the priming battle. So Mochi really has to play accurate here. Uh, I totally agree with everything you said. Okay, so uh, then not too much goes on here until uh, the double one joker from the bar. Holy yes, smoke. Yes, amazing roll. Double and, one, so good. So good. And, and Hideaki does find the right play, which is to hit because you have time to roll a six. And if you get hit with a hit from the bar, you're actually quite happy because now your opponent is just going to start crunching. So uh, that was a, a crazy joker. Uh, again, all those trolls who thinks that we have rigged dice on Galaxy, look what happens in at the biggest stage when they roll their own dice. It's backgammon, guys. It's not rigged dice. Uh, okay, so here we got the redouble for uh, from Hideaki. And ooh, what a position. What do you think about this yeah. one, Jorgen? Yeah, again, this prime versus prime is very hard to evaluate. Uh, every single checker is important. Uh, and on top of that, you have a match score consideration. It's, uh, <laughs> you need to, to have the, the match equities in your head, you know, the take points. And uh, since they prepared a long time for this and playing seven point matches, I'm, I'm sure both Mochi and Hideaki have, have them well memorized and know what's going on. Yeah, but what a position. And, and what about you pointed out something here, uh, Jorgen, just before we went on air? like. Yeah, uh, I checked in this position a little bit, and as it is now, we know it's it's, it's a borderline. And if you move up the blot on the eight point to the bar point, yeah. it becomes a clear clear take. Oh yes, wow, huge take. So that was a big swing. So what was the big difference here? It's more flexibility, I think. When you have the checker on the eight point, yeah, you're more flexible. Yeah, you have rolls like four, three, five, two that you close the board. Yeah. And, and it's also one more pips to play. Yeah, and yeah, one more pips to play, which is very, very crucial in a prime versus prime. It might be the difference between uh, a full roll uh, of movement of being able to keep your prime. So uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's one pip closer to crunch, um, and then but, the, yeah. And then again, if you move with another pip down to your six point, now again becomes a very small take pass. Position. Wow! Yes. So I guess now you get the good fives again. They do something now you constructive. Get the good fives, yeah. And if you move with another pip to the five points, now if the fives is bad, and again now we have it's a, uh, it's clear, a pretty, clear take again. Clear take again. Yeah, it's still a huge redouble. I guess the volatility is just so high here that you you really need to redouble. Um, yeah. But it shows how difficult this, it is to assess a position like this. Yes. Just move. The checker one step at a time and it goes from pass take pass take yeah 
that's why I always say that prime versus prime positions, they are the most difficult uh, positions in my opinion. It's such small details yeah. and they're so tactical, you know, one pip here, one pip there. So you got to be aware of timing and mobility, but you also got to be aware of all the tactics, the count the numbers, are the numbers diversified, uh, all that stuff. Yeah, really tricky stuff here. And then also after after uh, much it, if it takes the four cube, an eight cube will be for the match, and an OCD you will need to have a twenty four percent to take. So what much you also need to look for is how often will you get efficient redouble here? Ah yes, that's true. If they make, as long as it, if if uh, the probably most common way to win is is Hideaki's crunches, but will Moshe have a cube if 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 it's rolling and. Uh, Hideaki clears his six point. It's a really good point, or yeah. Maybe, so, a, maybe he needs to wait until the five points is open. So I guess it actually makes it slightly more difficult for Mochi to take compared to a money game situation because the... I think so. I'm, I'm also not sure if XG takes this into account, how often do you get an efficient recube here? Because I don't think he, he that often will get a perfect recube here. Yeah. Um, he can read out quite aggressively, if, though. But if you roll out this position, I, I would guess it will become too small pass, given these numbers we have on the plus plus. Okay, okay, that's a good prediction. Maybe some of the viewers out there can uh, can try to roll it out and uh, let us know tomorrow in the chat because we are back tomorrow. We're back twelve days in a row at the same time to cover this amazing uh, championship uh, battle between number one and number two in the world right now. Um, but we've got a couple of more positions, Jorgen. We still yes. haven't uh, gone through game one yet, which was the critical game, by the way. Uh, yeah, we have one more here, the the 5-3 uh, for Hideaki. Not too yeah. big of a deal, but he chose to stay uh, and be, play the spare checkers a little bit awkwardly here, deep. So what do you think about this position? Uh, I think I would stay too, over the board. I'm pretty sure I would stay, try to pick up the blood. Uh, but it turns out that it's so awkward to have these checkers deep in the in the board that it's, it's better to run. Yeah, I'm really surprised that uh, Mochi is actually winning 7.7% here after Hideaki's play versus 2.3% if he simply just plays flexible. Yeah, and of course if you start to digest in the position and look forward, but uh, they're playing with the clock and you cannot spend too much time on positions yeah. like this. Yes. You have to sometimes go with your gut feeling and in general it's right to try to pick up the yeah. lot. So you, you cannot blame Hideaki to, to, to make an error here. Yes, the gamma difference is 13% for Hideaki's play versus 4%, 4.1% for the right play. But as we just talked about before with the re -cube, with the cube, the gamma value is not as high because he's shooting one point above the target. So he doesn't get full value for the gamma he wins. That takes down the value of these 13% a little bit. Uh, but yeah, yeah. tough, tough decision. Okay, let's move yeah. on to game number two, Jorgen. We don't have too many, yeah. uh, too many moves left. Um, this game evolved into a, uh, what did it evolve into? Yeah, kind of a, uh, yeah, Hideaki gets to make the, oh, gets to make the, the, the golden point here and Mochi is playing a one man back. And then all of a sudden we see a blunt Essentially a blunder here. Yeah, it is a blunder from Mochi with 4-1. Yeah. So what what went wrong here and what's the right idea? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it looks very natural to, to step up because you, you're duping 6-4. 6-4 makes the bar or 6-4 makes the two point and... Uh, That's a good point. The 6-4 is duplicated. Yeah, so... And for example, if Hideaki rolls 4-2 and make the bar point now, you much prefer to be on the 23 point to have a escape. Yeah, out, so. you have a direct it, shot even. Yeah, it's hard to see any upside with Mochi's play, so that's yeah. why I think it's a blunder. Uh, that's true. That the duplication is really, or the, the fact when when uh, Hideaki uses his numbers to build, so for instance, 6-2, Mochi gets a direct shot. 6-4, Mochi, oh, actually maybe 6-4 he's going to blitz, maybe he's not going to build. But 4-1, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. number. 4-2. As you said, uh, yeah, he gets the direct shot, so you need to step up here and, and put pressure on on the on the blood on the on on Hideaki's eight point. 
Yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah shows that uh, even the best players in the world are human. I mean, you, you, sometimes you make mistakes. It's yes. Again, if you would show this to Moshi, you would have uh, no problem to find the right play here. It's... Yeah, that's funny, right? That there's something about uh, performing over the board. That's not only about knowledge. It's also about being able to have a clear mind and be focused and find the best place. Yeah. For sure, Mochi will be disappointed when he sees this. It, it's just like a normal middle game position. It's not really a critical position. It's a quite e obvious idea that you need to step up. Anyway, yeah. um, let's move on here. Hideaki builds a beautiful board. Uh, and then we come see a small inaccuracy here for Hideaki, but we're not going to dwell on that. Okay, the 4-1 from Mochi in move nine and a half here. Um, yeah, what happens here, Jorgen? Yeah, I think uh, he hits on the ace point maybe because it's a less return hit uh, and uh, try to get the, get that checker out of the play. But it looks feels better to, to hit on the bar point. Uh, yeah, it's a better checker distribution when you hit on the bar point versus hitting on the ace. You get to keep your eight point though. That's the advantage of Mochi's play that he gets to keep a little little bit of structure. Um, yeah, but he leaves more shots. And yeah. It's not nice to leave shots when your opponent has a four-point board like this. Yeah, it's a small, small uh, tactical mistake here. Yes. Okay. So Mochi does get into a situation where he can double, and Hideaki uh, makes a great take, uh, and then not what happens here. They small inaccuracies, but nothing. Nothing big. Uh, a little inaccuracy for Mochi with 2-1. I also mentioned it during the live stream. Uh, me and Nick talked about this, that there's not really any price to pay from building the 7-point because in the worst case, like when you roll a 6-3 next time, you can just clear the 7-point. Uh, so you can might as well just make the 7-point and have an easier time clearing the 8-point. An advantage to bring in, though, is that you may gain a tempo sometimes. If you, For example, if you roll double 6 next time or the gamma may be close, so... Oh yeah, you, you get a crossover extra, you mean? To... Yeah, you get the crossover extra. Yeah. So. Yes, that's, but, yeah. that's true. And you actually do win 1% more gamma with that play. But at this, uh, at this uh, even though there was only the second game, the, 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 some time I had to run away from Mochi's block. Uh, and uh, this, not, this is not the play you can spend time on. Yes, maybe. that's true. The difference will be small, and you, you have to do what you what you see first and, and play on. Yeah, and then we're heading into a, a missed cube from Hideaki. So he gets the hit, he gets the turnaround hit here with the 6-4 from the bar, quite lucky. And uh, and here he Mochi enters with an ace, and now Hideaki actually he misses this redouble. But who can blame him? Yeah. Uh, so. so... The gamma price is not as good as for money here, so it's more inclined to, to, to double than play on for gamma. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the reason that the, it should double here. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, that's true. Um, so the, the, the gamma he has here, the 12% gamma, they're not quite as valuable as they usually would be. There's also the fact that uh, he's actually very, very close. He's actually balancing on the take point of Mochi here and this position has volatility. If it didn't have volatility, you know, if Mochi was still on the bar and the winning percentage would be the same, maybe it wouldn't be a double because the volatility level is lower. But here we have volatility. All the sequences where Mochi hits loose on the ace point, oh sorry, Hideaki hits loose on the ace point and Mochi returns with an ace. I mean, he might be lucky and escape and win the game. Or Hideaki could simply close the game immediately by rolling a deuce and making the six prime. So the volatility is present, um, but the doubling window was very narrow. Do you can we blame yeah, it's Hideaki? Yeah, a small doubling window when, when you have a cube and you're up four zero. So yeah, um, and then we do get into a position where Hideaki eventually just cashes it, even though he's indifferent. Maybe he didn't want to waste our time here. We did have more than a thousand viewers live, concurrent viewers at peak. So Hideaki was kind to us. Rather than rolling four or five more times, he just cashed it, and let's move on with it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're heading into the last game here, the final game, game three, and this was not really an eventful game. Hideaki got off to a really good start here, um, escaping both back checkers and basically just cruising it from there. Um, not really too many decisions going on. Now Hideaki has the five prime, it's looking really good. 
for Hideaki and Mochi is in trouble with no timing, trapped two checkers behind the prime. And actually, here is a decision, double two for Hideaki. And this is a prime or blitz dilemma. So what's yeah. going on here, Jorgen? He doesn't need gammons, he just wants to win the game. And I think that the, the key here is that uh, White has no timing. So even if he buttons up on the 23 point, his, the, the two point game will be really poor for him. So it's not that important for, for Hideaki to hit. Yes. Uh, so that's why the, the, the 11 point just quiet play is, is the way to go here. Yeah, it's very close though. So there must be some value in hitting. Yeah, yeah, sometimes the Moshi will not come in, so you just uh, close him out and wins without the contest. Yes, that's true. And there's also this thing for Hideaki that the points he really wants to make, the, the, the crucial point for Hideaki is the three point. But after the three point comes the deuce point. So, and his, uh, uh, his spare checkers are quite front loaded. He doesn't have too much flexibility here. So maybe just making the second best point now is not maybe not too bad and uh, preventing him uh, Mochi from angering up or yeah it's it's a way to activate the the kind of front-loaded spare checkers that he has yeah but he's winning the game here in a way I mean it's yes small small difference between it the is. best and the second best play it is and for money obviously uh, if the or in a money game where the cube had been in play hitting would be clearly the best play because of the game gain in yeah, gammon yeah. but that's not what he needs here Hideaki and uh, yeah, then we see a little inaccuracy for Mochi. Uh, he chose, chooses to play quite a bold play in move 11 here where he enters on the 24 and then breaks the midpoint, uh, kind of inviting Hideaki to, to hit more checkers to try to gain timing. Uh, but as the slightly better move would have been to just fight for some connect, con contact or perhaps even fighting for getting that anger on the, on the 22 point, which is way better than 24 point. So small inaccuracy. Yeah, because the timing, timing is so bad for an ace point game. So that's that's why. Yeah. Maybe come up on the twenty-two point is the best play. Exactly. The timing on the ace point game is really horrible, to say the least. He's just down nineteen pips and he doesn't have any mobility. He has he's got a couple of checkers in the outfield, but in two or three rolls he's gonna crunch. So yeah. Um, and then Hideaki simply just cruised it home from here. He did have a slot or not decision where I was slightly against it. And it is actually a small error here we see, uh, but nothing too too big. I, I, I thought that uh, he- Yeah, on the 4-3, yeah. Yeah, the 4-3. I thought that Mochi would simply just crunch without, you don't, you didn't really need the, the, the six prime. Um, no, and he, yeah, and Mochi may, if Mochi rolls two six, he may <laughs> turn the game around, so. That's the thing, yeah. He might roll two six, or a double two is also pretty good. So I was just yeah. thinking about just, just playing safe here, a little bit ugly. Uh, but it was no big deal. It was actually quite a beautiful play from uh, Hideaki. And uh, then he just cruised it home from here. And the official PRs were 3.62 versus 3.50. My XG here says 3.49. So there's a little in, uh, difference there. I don't know why. But uh, 2 0 for Hideaki after match one of the UBC. Jorgen, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio to dissect. Thank you, Mark. I'm looking forward to the matches tomorrow. Yes, we are sending same time, same place, and uh, we're going to uh, make the, the YouTube link uh, public, of course, on Facebook. Uh, if you already su subscribe to YouTube and click the notification bell, then you'll get the, the recommendation for the live stream link as well. But it's same time, same crew with a new secret grandmaster to do the analysis. Hideaki Ueda is up 2-0, so super grandmaster Mochi, he needs to, uh, he needs to come back and perform. Um, a little bit of a shout out to uh, the Melbourne Open, which is going to be an online event this year. It's going to play from the 1st of February and go six weeks. They have their satellite tournaments and a couple of different events and the big main event. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that on social media. And uh, we've got the new Galaxy Earth board released. We released the first glimpse of it here in, a, in one of the ads for in this stream. So I hope you liked it. I hope you liked our small ads that we put in. We want to put in something that's stimulating and fun to watch. So the link is down below for the Earth board. Uh, all the ads that you saw, the links are down below here in the YouTube section. Guys, this was the biggest COVID backgammon party ever. We had more than a thousand live viewers on this stream. We've got more than 5,000 views so far in this video. So thank you so much for joining and 
please be back tomorrow because it's going to be just as cool. Nick Blazier and I are ready to to give a good good a backgammon experience once more. So thank you guys. See you tomorrow and take care.